What's up, Luca? Well, there's like a lot of elites, but not a lot of campfires. Malese. Mal Malese. Transform two cards. Guys, am I the one that likes transform two cards? I feel like I am. Combust Sentinel. Interesting. Oh, Ascension 7. Okay, that's a big difference. But congrats, anyways, dude. How they say? If you're Ascension 23 streak, you gotta get streaming, boy. You got you got the magic stuff. School's got shut down. What's up, you Putra? Combust early is pretty good. It's pretty good for elites. Like it's good for AOE in general, but really good for like. Also, an early combust can sometimes dictate what cards you take. Like, it makes a rupture better. Absolutely. It makes you less inclined to get AoE. Um, it's good for like triple centuries for sure. It's good damage for hex. Uh, not hex ghost, but uh, well, it's good for hex ghost, but also good for goblin nub too. All in all, I don't mind. Stream has hit his high conclare plant ever today. Oh, because of uh quarantine and stuff. That's funny. Like ever in exi in the history of Steam, really? A hoy kite. That's crazy. That is nuts. Do we try to go for more leads because there's not a lot of campfires and combustion should be kinda good here? Let's go for you, just go for the shop, check it out. I mean, how, how good is combustion really? Is the question we ask ourselves. How good is combustion really? I mean, here's the thing we heal all this up, so combustion just like, for the most part, doesn't lose anything. I don't know if I like whirlwinds. Now that I have a combust. I'm not sure about the whirlwind. Dropkick is interesting because we have a small deck with bash. Headbutt is gener generally a very good card. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to take Warwind. I just don't really want. Oh, talk about value. Wait, so how much did I take for the first one? That's just that's just pure gain. I took five to get seven. That's pure gain. I feel like Warwind's underrated. I don't know. I feel like over Warwind gets overrated at a lower level. And then... It has a place. I mean, it dumps strength, right? So it has a way to dump strength and... It dumps your strength. And it does AoE. It has serves a purpose, but like, I don't know. So now that we have strength putt. Elise. And then half of Elise. Malice. Ah, Malice. Malice Windover. So is this ever a Syrian Blow deck? Because we have Headbutt already. And we have Combust for AoE. And is this ever just a Syrian Blow deck? With one campfire and just act? I doubt it, right? Generally, I like Sir Boomerang. I think it's a pretty nice attack. And we have... We we lost a strike. Remember, we lost two strikes in place with these two cards because of Transform, which is not bad. You can replace a strike with this. And we have a, a Strength pot, so that's a good way to dump your Strength. It's also worlds for Havoc. So like now that we have a Headbutt, Headbutt Havoc becomes a much better... Oh, my, my sound is really low, guys. Headbutt Havoc is an interesting concept. Especially with Sentinel as well. And, you know, I, it's been a while since I've given Havoc some love. You know, I, I do think Havoc is quite a good card. It's a little early for Havoc, but we, with Havoc to dictate what it hits, you can start taking... You can start taking more... Um, energy cost cards and the like, havoc allows you with headbutt to like sometimes take an early demon form or barricade which are very premium cards but you're worried about the cursed nature of them or even like bludgeon sometimes whatever bludgeon is still for generally good in act one but the point is that with headbutt and sentinel havoc it also taking this really dictates what kind of cards you can take like this is actually a very powerful card conceptually um i'm not sure i'm not sure if i want to commit to that like I might be a big brain to take the Havoc, but I'm going to take the damage instead. So we have Combust Rupture, and like, that's just 
at least that's something, right? It's better than nothing. We do have a turbo to jump to strength. So, like, I don't hate it. Is it... Do I have bad experiences with this combo? Absolutely. Am I going to let that dictate whether or not this is like, a bad choice right now? I don't think it is. The question is, do we think that's elite worthy? Let's find out. Um... So we could take a potion and maybe replace the speed putt. Mm, speed putt's not as good here, so I can buy a potion here. I, I think I like that better on average. I'll, I'll do for multiple elites. I think with combust, not, it's not upgraded, but I think with combust here we'll be fine. There's a world where we do dexterity part for this fight and then do strike, so we can get ahead on the damage. In my opinion, be back one second. Yeah, it's a, I have a rupture combust in my deck. Yep, yep, yep. What's up? How you doing? Uh, how you doing, David? What's up? How you doing? I'm gonna save a strength pot for another fight. Maybe I might even save it for hexagos. I'm worried about damage. I think I like doing some boomerang here. Some boomerang headbutt. Does that make any sense? More bash butter. I think this makes sense. We're taking a lot of damage, though. I mean, it's, it is... To say it's sort of demon form is just... That's a stretch. It's a stretch. I mean, Combust Plus would have been a lot better here. I could have just not taken this early elite, so I, I'm kind of opting for, like, a three elite path. Because I feel like... I don't know. I guess I'm trying to just get more power here. This is fine though. I forget though. So, do you get. Does the potion chance go down to 40 when you get a potion, or it only goes down 10% when you get a potion? I don't know if it goes down to 40 or. You, or it... So, I was talking about Exhum. Um, I think Exhum is rarely a curse. Like, maybe it's a slight curse right now, guys. But this very quickly becomes huge. The problem is, Trug is really good right now. All right, so true. It makes sense to no less of a curse. It, it it just starts managing burns against Hexaghost. It's very just very premium block card. This is a very powerful card that rarely actually has curse status because it's, there's so many things that this can operate with in Ironclad. But I'm not gonna be able to upgrade Trugit here, and I, I'm gonna go. I guess I'm taking now. I'm taking a curse, so I might lose this run actually. Because now I just took a curse and exhume, essentially. I took a curse and exhume, essentially. But I, I do plan to rest here. Second wind is something that helps manage the burns here and give me block. I guess iron wave's sort of blocky. Second wind works with exhum actually, so I can get rid of some stuff that I don't care about, and then I can actually exhum stuff back later on. So the second wind works with sentinel as well. So second wind works with sentinel. I can also bring back whatever I get rid of with exhum later on. So it's actually I think second wind might be the play here. Yes. Yeah, so two combustion is not proc rupture twice. Took a very bold move, going for this path, but also taking the exhum. I can only I can do one lead for sure with speed pot, with strength pot. The second lead might not be able to. Um, I think second wind has a place to manage and give me block for the burns, but also I don't know. It makes sense to sometimes you can get block from sentinel and do more things, or you can exhaust things and later on pull it back with exhum. So I think it has a place. Yes, one combustion product does give you strength. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I played too fast there. I, 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 I thought I was, I was pushing for lethal there. I was pushing for lethal. Maybe blocking was just always better, because I had damage anyways. Yeah, so I took damage to the face because I was pushing for lethal, but maybe I should have just... I probably had lethal anyways. Let me, let me slow down. Second wind's kind of, it's really, oof. 
Yeah, basically I was pushing for lethal, but I didn't actually do the math. If I did the math, maybe I didn't have to push for lethal. I had the damage anyways. And I didn't. I, I should have done the math. I will do short doing the math. From now on, we are doing the math. We're slowing down. I hope that this is not too late. I hope it's not too late for me to... Uh, I hope I'm not too far gone with how much damage I took. But we will start doing the math. This is a decent second win in my opinion. So we determined that this is a uh, 15 damage. So how about that? Give me 15. So it's going to be in total 26. If we do combust. We have lethal. So combustion basically guarantees lethal. We can also don't have to do combustion. We can so if we just draw a strike, we have lethal as well. What are the odds we draw a strike? I think we just do this and guarantee lethal here. Suffering Clim is fantastic. Whoa, that's a flame barrier and true grit. True grit's very good, but flame bears premium block as well this is very good wow wow, wow. This, this is an uncommon relic that's crazy excuse me what's up man what's up red eyes so from your combust mix is much better now uh let me do the flame barrier here do now that we did now that we did gremlin we'll have 24 life going well, it depends on what this event but 20 more life going to another event so triple centuries i can beat no problem what about lag of Volin? is lag of Volin too much with only gamblers brew Is, is lack of Volin too much? I'm triple century I'm fine with. Lack of Volin is the other story. I mean, I don't like Rupture Combust too much, but I got this from Transform. So I did Transform two strikes. I got Sentinel Combust. And since I had the Combust, the Rupture felt better. Absolutely. It's not the worst. It also makes Star Boomerang, you know, I still have, have strength scaling. Lagavulin. What's our gameplay for Lagavulin? We try to get some Earth Powers out, get some strength scaling. We need to block like two attacks and we probably kill him by the time he attacks again. Right? So like we just need to block two attacks. So with Lagavulin we have time to skid up our powers. Then we get some scaling going, hopefully. We have to block two attacks. By the time we're blocking two attacks, we're also doing some damage, but also getting strength. And then we gotta kill him within two turns. And we have Gambler's Brew to help us dictate whether we can get lethal. Because we have... It depends on the draws, obviously. But we do have time to get the, the two powers out. Then we're doing some damage while scaling. We, we have the block to block a little bit. And then we, second wind can help us dictate we get Shrub Boomerang more often for lethal. But it is a little bit risky. This is a, a rough fight as well. I wonder if second win was better there. I guess it was a 33. So, there's a shrug it off versus Funeral Pain. Funeral Pain works with Second Wind. Um, it works with Exhum. Exhum is not that good right now, but Funeral Pain is a, is a decent power. Shrug it off is a little bit more consistent, for sure. Especially with Headbutt. Headbutt, Shrug it off is pretty good. I might be willing to go for the Funeral Pain, although we have a lot of cursed stuff going on right now. Like, we have some setup with powers that are not relevant at the moment when we play them. So, like, Funeral Pain can bust Rupture when you play them at very low value. Um, Final Pain makes the overall deck a little bit better, obviously. Once we get rolling, it's something we can build around. So, like, Second Wind becomes better and other cards we pick up. But at the moment, I think Shrug It Off just makes more sense. I think we have too many things going on right now to take another Curse. Like, I already took an Exhumed Curse. 
so I don't know if I want to take a, a funeral pain that's like value but not so super proactive I'm not being very proactive with my picks I'm, I'm making a deck that's very more future minded so we do have decent relics so like we have self from clay and this versus sustain but we're about to fight two hard pull fights Shrug needs to be needs to play here Might be another bash. Um, we do have good block coming up. Shop has to be big here. We have to fight. Let's have, have, have one more. Let's have one more hallway fight. So Hemokinesis is like. Goes with the self damaging, the self forming clay stuff. This is a great upgrade. At the moment, though, 3 HP is unupgraded, it hurts a lot. Is this a gambler's brew? Hmm. So. The shop has to be really good here. We, do, we can buy potions at the shop as well for the Hexaghost. This is only 5 block. I take 6 to the face. I mean, a single disarm will maybe be enough to beat the Hexaghost here. Because second wind manages burns. Disarm with Exhum makes it so I can survive a lot longer in the Hexaghost fight. And then the Rupture Combust combo should be enough scaling. Xenoplay would have been better for Act 2 on average, but Shrug it up is not a bad pick here. We definitely want to, we do want to get some upgrades here. We didn't get to get a lot of elites. Like maybe the third elite was better than all, per no, but I think the shop is too important here. The game is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna headbutt that just in case. I was gonna headbutt this sword boomerang, but. I do think this is better on average. I want to save life here. I do want to save life here. I think saving life is most important. We may not get lethal. I think my gold is pretty important here, actually. So I could go for combust and I take an extra three damage, or we can just full block and I think we should be able to get lethal. But it's cutting it close. Life's a lot more important though. Got yeah, offer another potion. That's crazy. And flame is very good. Now, essence of steel versus fear pot. I wonder if fear pot is more important than essence of steel. This is gonna mean so I can I can survive survive a lot longer. And that means I can go more aggressive. So I have self forming clay plus essence of steel. I, I can take a lot more damage. Fear pot could help me get lethal much quicker, since I'm going for a strength gain stuff. I think Essence of Steel means we're probably going to end up rest, uh, smithing instead. And if we smith, then we're probably smithing Shore Boomerang or Inflame. Probably sm smithing Shore Boomerang and you want to go for Lethal with that. Or maybe we're smithing Bash or Hemo. Maybe Bash for more vulnerable uptime. Gamma's Brew is pretty important. Um, Essence of Steel, I wasn't supposed to get a potion. I mean, the odds were low. I would have used a potion. Uh, maybe not. One problem that I did take a little bit extra damage in Cultist, and maybe that all this is influencing my decisions. If I take less damage in Cultist, maybe we don't have to. That's in the past. Hmm. I wonder if your is more important, but I'm going to go for the defensive approach. I think a single disarmament does a lot. Apotheosis might do it for me. Apotheosis upgrades all my cards. I think that that is enough value to win, for sure. Zoom still doesn't have a target yet. I thought this is also some kind of uh, hedging your... Like if Fusion Hammer is a thing that might happen, it makes Fusion Hammer a little bit better, but... I think Pythesis gives us enough value for sure. The problem is we don't have Disarm, so... Can we survive the Exeghost with this much damage? 
Is it more proactive to do like um, remove true grit? So this is out. This is, these are all out, unfortunately. Do we do want to do like true grit metallicize remove? Is that better actually? Remove a strike, get a true grit, get metallicized. Then we have good defense. We have good defense, and then our damage is gonna come from the inflame rupture combust scaling. We have sober rings dump. So we have strength scaling, and we have good defense. This is tough because this right here, this remove true grip metallicis makes my deck overall much better. For act two as well. Apotheosis is is definitely not bad here. I don't know how much it actually helps me though. Like how much does it help me to have upgraded defense and strikes? Versus the ability to have true grip to manage burns. Metallicize, but these won't be upgraded. Any of these potions are super useful. Yeah, I think it's just this. I mean, resting becomes a little bit better now that we have apotheosis, and resting buys us more time. So if we if we rest, if we rest, we we're gonna take a little bit more damage from the initial attack, but it buys us more time to do like rupture combust scaling and maybe even a spread the second attack with the burns. The second one does manage burns though. Um, we do have good defense with essence of steel, and apotheosis is gonna make our defense really good. The problem is, we have twenty one life. And combust rupture does whittle us down, but maybe we kill fast enough. I think we we want to be able to do a hemokinesis, right? I want to do a hemokinesis willy nilly because that also strengths uh, scales me up faster. So combust puts me in a clock, and, and hemokinesis also puts me in a clock. So resting will give me a lot more leeway. It makes me a little bit worse for Act Two. I just need to get a good block for the second turn, so maybe gambler's will helps there. I get combust out of the way now. That's a good turn. Zoom doesn't do much for us. We need to get Bash out. Exhum hurts to do. Exhum helps to do. Exhum should be really important for Act 2. Super Mage are important. I mean, maybe we just have way too much damage. Maybe I just never need to rest. Maybe I, oh, I underestimated myself. I got good first turns though. This gives me energy insurance. This gives me even more card draw and um, more scaling. And then offering helps me set up and find apotheosis and stuff. Offering's pretty good. What's up, Plague Doctor? I mean, I had really, really stellar draws. I, um, I don't know. Maybe I didn't need a rest though. Maybe I underestimated my deck. I guess I just got really good draws that made things feel a lot better. My draws weren't going to always be apotheosis into flame barrier. So, you know, I, overall, maybe instead of being results oriented, I think the play was correct. The, the draws are really good. You can't zoom zoom. They took that out. This hasn't been in the game for a long time. So, these choices are interesting. I'm a big fan of Berserk, but yeah, I would need to upgrade it. Apotheosis does upgrade it. That gives me some energy insurance. I think offering helps us get big turns to kill things in the first three turns of a fight, which are already important. It does have some kind of synergy with rupture, and it also helps us find apotheosis. So I think offering is to play here. You can no longer rest. That's pretty bad for us. I think it's either Pandora's or Empty Cage. I might go for Pandora's here. Remove my strikes and defends, and so Sentinel can actually be an energy gain with this deck at the moment. We won't have energy. But Apotheosis and Offering help us with the energy. I think Coffee Tripper is... There's there's a potential for Coffee Tripper to get the energy here, right? But with a deck that has Combust Offering, 
it's a little risky. We do have blood vials, so we, we definitely could... We definitely could sustain and try to find ways to sustain. I, I'm not saying, like... I think it's the Pandora's here. So, Seen Red is energy. Exhume is energy. For Seen Red as well. Sentinel is also energy. We got a Clash Reckless Charge Headbutt. These are all pretty good cards for the most part. Headbutt is very powerful. Seen Red helps with the situation that we're at right now. Sentinel has dual purpose, so right now it doesn't feel that great, but it, it definitely can get better. And then Perfected Strike. Did I just mess up the Pandora's box by pressing map? Perfection is probably my first removal. I hope I didn't mess up the. Okay. Perfection is probably the first removal. So now we can determine how many elites we want to do. Like, we can probably. We don't really have a. We don't have MLA. We don't have the best AoE. So, Gremlin Leader and Slavers are not as good. We can go over here and get upgrades, but the problem is we have Apotheosis, right? So, maybe I want to do Elite just to find, like, a reason to rest. Maybe this is not a bad path. We can go here and Elite. It might hurt us, but we can rest, do another Elite. We get two Elites. But I also want to get the Sparkle out of the way. The problem is, Act 2 Sparkle, like, if this is Book of Stabbing, we're pretty fucked. For sure, I want to remove the Perfected Strike. I think the deck is actually pretty decent. It needs, it needs a lot more, but it's decent. I want to get the spark out of the way so Act 3 and not Force. There's another shop here for another removal, and there's another late elite. That feels pretty good. We don't have AoE, so this sparkle is really scary. This would be the scariest part. The alternative is to go over here, really really defensive. Go for shop, and then go for a really elite. I'm going to go for two elites here. This fight could be red. This fight actually is not too bad. I mean, double exhum, so we definitely need something for these exhums to do. Like, you see how these exhums are... I could do double offering, but that feels like a meme. How much HP do I really want to lose? Do I save more HP in the long run by doing offering now, though? Because this turn is so unproactive, probably. I mean, these cards are kind of interesting. These cards are very interesting here. The fact it's funny that that guy got I don't know. So all these all these exhumes, all this stuff, they're gonna feel kinda like a meme right now, but also so from clay makes the self damage a little bit better for the following turn. So we kinda just win this fight. Overall, not a bad fight for us, even though we did offering twice. This gives us more strength scaling. That's pretty nice. A second rupture, that ticks twice now, right? So if we take rupture number two, we can start ticking twice. So things like offering and exhume offering gives us two strength each time. If we get those both out. So I think this was a lot better. So we can get rid of one of the exhumes and get max HP. We can also just get rid of the perfected strike, right? So if I value max HP, I can get rid of one of the exhumes. But I think Exhum is going to be a very secret, a very secret sleeper OP card that's going to take this deck to the next level. It's going to take my tech, like Disarms. It's going to take some of the cards that I... I, I feel like I value Exhum pretty highly, so I could get rid of it for max HP, but... Um, I think I'd rather just get rid of Perfected Strike here. I don't know how much I value a full heal with max HP. I think Exhum is, is worth more, right? Clash, they don't give more heal. Reckless Charge gives full heal, but... The deck can choke on bad turns, absolutely. So we can basically argue, like... Maybe I need to get one, rid of this card now, because... We only have a couple floors before we get ready for the Sparkle. The Special Elite. And um, we probably want to move Perfect Strike anyways, so we might as well just take this thing as kind of a curse. But this could be very easily with this next shop coming up become not as not a curse. And also, it's not even a curse right now. Offering is still relevant, so it gives us another offering, which gives us strength. Sometimes it's not even a curse. That's a brimstone. <laughs> That's a 
and brimstone. So, RP to pair and brimstone calendar, all this stuff. Brimstone doesn't make any sense here. Um, I want to remove. Maybe I want to remove Clash more than anything. This deck shapes up to want to evolve. I could take a power through and I could remove the Clash. And we can try to find Evolve, but I think willingly putting Wounds and, and Daze in my deck is a little bit of a meme. But Power Through is a very solid block. I don't mind it. I might even want a True Grid as well. Um, maybe I want one of these potions instead for the Elite. Like, for Book of Stabbing is pretty hard for us, right? So, Liquid Bronze for Book of Stabbing's Insurance was good. It doesn't really help much of anything else, except for Book of Stabbing. So, I think we should play around maybe. Panache is AoE. For the slavers, so we do things like offering the like exhum offering. We can get panache procs multiple times. So we can get panache proc at least one more than once with the double offering exhum stuff going on, and that might be the AOE we need for the slavers and stuff. Power through is a generally okay block card. I don't mind it, and I have second wind as well. I don't mind it. I think Power 3 is probably fine. It's on sale. I'd rather get a True Grit. True Grit, I want to start managing some stuff like Curses. And I can have more control over Sentinel with True Grit. I can get rid of the Clash. Um, these potions, I'm unsure of. I think the Bronze Skills, Liquid th Bronze is pretty good for the Book of Stabbing. So maybe the, the scariest fight for us is Book of Stabbing. And maybe we just take that as insurance. I'd rather just remove a card. What card are we removing? It's probably the Clash. Although Clash has a, a space in this deck for sure. I might save the rest of my money. Although I do think Shruga is pretty good. I could take a second Hemoquinesis. That's like more damage because we are missing some damage, right? I'm going to take a Shruga here. We can skip the Sparkle now. We can still go for two events and go skip the Sparkle. But I'd rather get the Sparkle out of the way for the... But there's always a way I can pivot away from it. I don't have to do the sparkle. There's still a pivot point. Does he attack again? I can go for lethal with hemokinesis. Not bad. Another flame barrier. Wow, that's insane. So flame barrier is like pseudo AOE. So close in a good weaken. The weaken might be really crucial to kill the hyper beam because how are we gonna block the hyper beam without weaken, right? But this is a flame barrier plus, which is very, very powerful. Um, cleave is AOE, and we do need AOE, but I think flame barrier is pseudo AOE, and it's it's a very powerful block. This is a very bad turn. I think we have to do Gambler's Brew here. I think it's a very bad turn. I think I have to do Gambler's Brew. I could be wrong. We did like so many offerings, we, we probably just finished with the offerings in general. We're probably gonna have to rest here. The offerings are not important because we have Pathos, so I'm basically using my face as, as block. And we're gonna we're gonna basically rest at campfires. Smoke bomb helps as well. So Dark Embrace actually gives us pretty good power actually. So this is a second way to dump my strength. Again, the second super ring, which is not bad. But Dark Embrace helps us draw our deck, which is pretty important with the double sentinel and I have with True Grit. I think Dark Embrace is very solid here. I could rest here and go for the elite right now. I would like to maybe get Dark Embrace more playable. Because I think it's pretty important with the offering here. Um, I think at this point we've, we're committed to fighting this special elite here. 
I feel we're okay. That's a good strong point, strength point. I think I want to get combust out. I think it's pretty important for us. What I don't like is not being able to play headbutt there. Do I want to play Dark Embrace before offering? I think it's important. Because we have things like Seeing Red. And we have things like Exhume right now for double sentinel. Um, this draws four cards. Let's play this. This draws four cards, yeah? Very nice. So now look at second wind. Look at what second wind does. It gives us block and energy. So we could do second wind right now and get rid of all this. But. I'm more inclined to want to like. Sure. So I could do this. Check this out. I can bring this back and exhume. Check this out. I want you guys to look very closely. Look very closely. You're welcome. So then we get Juggered that. They're gonna give us damage for the block. This would make a lot of sense here. Guys, when I call myself the best Ironclad East Coast, I have to do something every so often to like try to extinguish myself, distinguish myself from the other Ironclads. Hopefully we can do this today. Um, uh, the bigger problem is Hyper Beam here. We need to get a source of weaken. We need more block. Dragonite doesn't really do what we want it to do. We have big turns where we get a lot of block and incidental damage from blocking. Especially with Storm and Clay, we do get... There's only procs once though, it's a singular proc, so it doesn't actually give you multiple Dragonite procs. Heavy Blade is a, a bigger dump of strength, but I like Super Ring at the moment as it is. It's a single prog. I, I remember... Oh, so Dragon Burst is very good here. The problem with Dragon Burst, guys, is that I um, can only play... Dragon Burst is very powerful here. But I think we just have to do the... This, that. I would love to do Dragon Burst there. I really would. I think we're gonna have to do offering yet again. I could have with the dark embrace this time. Offering is kind of a meme at the moment. Hmm. 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 I can full block, but I think it's more important to, um... To play like this. No one else more plumbing.
We're always rushing anyways for the apotheosis exists. We just need to get apotheosis sooner. Oh, uh, uh, at all times. And trench is a way to get my block up. So this is actually kind of weird. So battle trench is very good to get apotheosis out and, and play cards. It helps get big second wins and big things. And trench, I think, might be the sleeper pick. It seems weird. Right now, it doesn't make as much sense as battle trench. Not even nearly enough sense. But Hyper Beam, I, I'm going to have trouble blocking, and with Flame Barriers and stuff, and Offerings, Entrench makes a lot of sense with things like also Power Through. I have big blocky cards, so Entrench would make a lot of sense. I think Battle Trench is a little too important at the moment to get everything rolling, because since we're having to force to rest so much, Apotheos is very important for us. We would never skip there. That's very good. Also, Entrench is really good so far, McLean, exactly. Entrench comes back to us. So, RP, Bile, Tornado, Red Skull, red, those, those are good cards. Those are good things to lose, or bad things to lose, rather. Um, Entrench has come back to us, and I think we have to really evaluate the value of Entrench here. Especially if I buy the Shrug It Off. If I buy Shrug It Off Entrench, then we actually have the ability to get really good Entrench turns on average. Especially if I upgrade Entrench. Um, this is not to be under undervalued. The, the ability to entrench Horn Cleat, the ability to entrench Subforming Clay, the ability to use Power Through and Flame Bear and Entrench, the ability to have Headbutt for this. There's a lot of things pointing to this being the right direction. And matter of fact, it might even be if we beat the boss with it, which I think the entrench is necessary for that. You know, we're going to get rare cards. Barricade is very much in the picture. If you don't play, it makes Offering better, sure. And it makes things like Second Win better, sure. But Entrench gives me the ability to actually win this fight. Thing is, I can't actually buy body slam with it. I'm just short of money. I don't see any of these portions that help me that as much. Chemical X is interesting. Not really, actually, not in this class. Oh, did I do my math wrong? Oh, ceramic fish. This is a very unfortunate turn. Oh, uh, this is a very unfortunate turn as well. Huh. So second wind's a little bit awkward. What I need is not second wind for Sentinel, but true get plus more often but we got, we're getting closer into apotheosis here is offering worth it here it certainly seems that way I don't think I have to do Hemokinesis here to win, although I think I do actually because the guy is not dying. Remember, we already succumbed to ourselves that so we're depending a lot on Apotheosis and we're going to have to uh, rest more often than not. That's something we've already succumbed to. Shockwave is very good. It gets rid of artifacts. It doesn't really help me get weakened because I don't have a source of weaken outside of that. What's up, Andy? I buddy. But it's a very powerful card. I mean, the problem here is our deck, our deck requires True Grit upgrade. Can we go to this elite with upgrading True Grit? And because True Grit targeting Sentinel is very important for certain turns. Or do we just keep resting here? It's depending on Apotheosis. The fact that I depend exclusively on Apotheosis is very bad. I could do spot weakness, head spot weakness right now. And take the damage. Um, I also want to play Dark Embrace. I could just do Dark Embrace, spot weakness, head spot weakness. No, I can't do both of those. This is tough because spot weakness gives me the strength for this fight. But I can win this fight off the back of like Flame Barrier alone. I do like this play, but I think Dark Embrace is very important actually. So since we do Dark Embrace is so important, I'm not going to do spot weakness twice. This works fantastically. So 
We're taking the damage to the face here, or do we want to block? I think the strength is pretty important. So we're taking quite a bit, but this damage of taking gets six block next turn. We have we're not taking damage next turn. This is where we really want scene red or offering on these turns. I wonder if we can draw into scene red. Is that where? Oh, we have battle trends. Hmm. I might have to save life. It's probably more important. I guess we should come into resting anyways. The problem is, what upgrade do we? I think upgrading Apotheos would help a lot for now. For the, turns like this, Apotheos would help a lot. Because then I can play Shrug and Spot right now. Hmm. Because I've been exclusively resting. And there's certain things you want to upgrade that are not Apotheosis related. So things you want to upgrade are going to be like, we want to get Dark Embrace upgraded so he's more playable regardless of Apotheosis. We also want to upgrade True Grit. Things like that. Unless this is a bottle of lightning, and then we just win the game, probably. That's a really bit poor timing on the... The thing about power through is that the damage is quite significant, but the wounds are kind of shitty. But we have ways to manage wounds. I think the damage is more important. here so what's interesting guys if I do if I do true grit here if I do have a true grit I, mean, I guess I already have lethal I want to be cute with it but it doesn't matter there's no reason to be cute I really want to be cute being cute doesn't matter here. Is that too much damage? Ice cream is interesting. <sighs> this is weakened. This is really important. Um, again, I can rest get all the max HP that I want. I think there's some, like I said, there's. I think we can actually be fine now with 55 life and the ability to have good card draw, the ability to have entrenched for big block. We have the ability to block and we have the source of weaken with shockwave uppercut. At this point, we. Are actually fine. We have 57 left going into this. Things I really want to upgrade is Dark Embrace because that's super crucial to this deck. And I think upgrading Apotheosis would help us quite a bit as well. Now, Ice Cream makes the Scene Reds even better on average, just playing them. I think Dark Embrace is more important to find Apotheosis. Do we ever need to rest here? I can about this with single most important cards in my deck. Our ability to block is quite high. Do we ever think we die from the hyper beam? Because we don't have potions that really help us here. We have enough time before hyper beam to actually be fully online. Uh, I could have saved ice cream there. I, I did 16 damage or nothing. I totally forgot about ice cream. That was just an oversight. I forgot about ice cream there. I wouldn't have done that otherwise. Most certainly was an oversight there. A part of me wants to go for like a big, big zoom offering now because I want to get my stuff out. Um, I also want to get rid of his artifacts right now. So I think what we're going to do is. I think we, 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 we'll find getting Zoom Out offering now. Game of the Artifacts is quite huge for me. So we're going to do Sentinel to get more. Uh, we don't want to overly block here. I would like to find Battle, uh, Dark Embrace. Uh, we can get rid of it. We can always get rid of. Like we can do this now. I mean, we 
we're basically solving the game already. Like, I don't know. We're overly blocked. So I can just go for strength skilling now. I don't think I'm going to need combust, although it's nice to get it out of the deck. Um, the deck's already pretty much won. Uh, game's over, actually. So now it's got to, like... Hmm. He's going to steal Flame Bear or Dragon Brace or Hemokinesis. I don't think I need to combust, but combust gets it out of my deck. A true good sense it always gives energy gain. But energy gain is not really relevant here. Combust helps kill the minions. I don't mind it. Also it has a nice sort of value. It's out of my deck as well. Dragon Brace is very important here. So this guy's gonna steal Headbutt or Sobum Ring. That's interesting. So these are the terms that are scary because of the block potential, but with Dragon Brace out, we should always be able to block pretty well. Keep in mind, we don't always usually have that much energy. We were fortunate enough to have energy because of offering turns, or the turns are in general are not gonna be like that. So I might just power through here and think. I want to get spot weakness because I think the strength ceiling is pretty relevant. Like then I can just at this point focus on just killing. But um, I mean if I find a trigger here that'd be fantastic. We're gonna 32 damage. Power through basically covers the whole thing, but the two wounds I'm not too sure about. Shrug it off is a is a gamble. Fourteen strength is even more, but maybe I just want to just focus on pushing damage here right now. Hmm. The wounds might hurt me. What? Nah, I think we're. I think the strength is gonna be really quite nice. Problem is, I'm not doing damage this turn. Two wounds. If I find trigger, this would be fantastic. Second wind is also a huge turn for us. Second wind also leads to really big turns for us, so we're fine. We're gonna have 15 strength by the time of that. that that's pretty nice, but this is a lot of wasted damage. Depending on what this hits, I might be able to kill this. But even then, I'm taking a little bit too much damage. I could always do Silk Chaos as well. And Silk Chaos is kind of a meme. I think we're just content with using the block we have in our hand and, and not drawing into anything else. And using Headbutt next turn to dictate Hyper Beam. So we got the weaken. The problem with this turn is um, we have headbutt next turn. But the problem is we have entrench here. This guy's gonna die next turn. So what I could do is headbutt entrench and block next turn. This guy's gonna die like that. I can, I can head with the entrench and then just kind of have full block, right? I can always do scene red as well, so I, I always have a lot of options. I want to play Entrench and then try to redraw into it. At this point, I want to push for damage. So if I had Calipers, Calipers would be great here, by the way. Uh, Barricade is actually just uh, the nuts for this deck. And we just won the fight, came over. I never need a rest here. Okay, and that's a barricade. That's a barricade. That is a barricade. A barricade makes this a little bit weird, right? But it helps set up the barricade initially. The upgrade barricade here, we, lo we don't no longer have Battle Tornado, but we do have big turns like Offering and Exhum to find barricade, find Apotheosis. Once you get barricade out, the deck then does Entrench stuff, Great Block, and then it does Body Slam already. 
It's got all the tools it needs. It's got max HP and stuff. This helps between the turns. So this is just Black Star. We can try to get more value out of our potions. I think Black Star gives us more relics. Relics are really good for this deck right now. Uh, we, would we would like an energy relic. I mean, there's a, there's a world for market pain. is pretty important. I mean, I don't like the wounds, but we have ways to draw past the wounds. We've got second winds, dark embrace. We've got offerings. The fourth energy would definitely help me stabilize quicker in the first three turns with barricade. Because once we're done, once we've survived first three turns, we win the game. So this is like most decks that I set up are basically like, okay, I win the first three turns and then we should win the game. But can we win the first three turns without needing energy relic? And we have seen reds and exhumes in offering for energy, and we have a lantern first turn and ice cream as well. I think we take black star here deck is quite thick energy also helps with thickness because energy gives more card draw which gives more you know cycle through but as m like most of my decks that are thick what you'll notice is that i have offering battle trance dark embrace for card draw i actually get through my deck very fast so the thickness is uh, an illusion it's like spanx whoa i did not mean to click that yeah energy just really helps a lot of ice cream and barricade of course um i think black star is totally fine though you like the Josh? I see. I appreciate it, bro. I don't like how the market paint affects our draws. The deck's already thick, so maybe the market paint doesn't affect the draws directly so much, but maybe the energy offsets the the two wounds in our draw. I think Black Shard's probably just fine, though. I think we can actually do pretty good with elites here, and I think we can circumvent the energy problem with lantern sentinels and scene red so we have ice cream scene red and double sentinel for energy um i don't know i think we can circumvent the energy problems here offering as well black star would definitely give us more power through relics what's up raymond though like i said it got determined how much market pain is going to affect me Well, we keep seeing three energy, but I said I have cards that give us energy, like Offerings, Scene Red, and Sentinels. Those are energy cards. And once we get set up, we have Barricade and Trench, which is extremely efficient value. I'm doing good, Reminder. How you doing? Exhumes as well for Scene Red. And we're definitely not devoid of energy. problem with market pain is that we don't have evolve and we don't have dark brace early these things are the first returns could be really brutal we are really dependent apotheosis the act four elite can basically kill us in the first returns depending with market pain with the draws but it does act four elite kill us anyways with out market pain or let's say i don't have market pain in the first two draws does market pain really make a difference there i mean getting two less card draw does affect our ability to find our barricade apotheosis with a stick deck. Okay, Dorn and Dega. We never had a fatal pain, but I don't think we need a fatal pain per se here. Dark Embrace counteracts that just as well. I think I can go for three elites here. Reptomancer is maybe the scariest. I can try to go for like two later elites so I get stronger before I fight the elites. I do want to hit a shot, but there's also these events which I want to prioritize for Mind Bloom. I can go for three elites in a lot of events. I think we go for two elites later on. Just because we're not sure how badly Reptomancer is going to affect us right now. But once we get set up with Reptomancer, we have... We also have a smoke to get out of there, but we all we need to do is just get Barricade, Apotheosis, and Trench, and then we win the fight. Like most fights, I think every fight's winnable as soon as we get our things set up. So let's just see how these first couple fights go. I think the days are probably not even worth it, although the damage might be relevant. Hmm. This is just ugly zooms. Is that 
killing that guy prematurely. Questionable. I'm sure you're gonna find some good stuff here. Um. Hmm. Could you probably. Hmm. Any upgrades, of course. I think more energy efficient here. I don't think we care about rupture right now. I think probably there's more energy efficient. The wounds suck, sure, but energy efficiency is pretty important for the next couple turns. GG. Don't need rupture. I don't need rupture there. Yeah, we're taking lots of damage, of course. So second spot weakness, I think that's antithesis to what the deck wants to do at this point. The deck now has a, 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 a it has a play style, it has, it has a goal. The goal of this deck is barricade and trench win game. Cards that are pretty good here, Master Strategy, Secret Technique. So Secret Technique, Master Strategy are very good. We tried. Violence is interesting. It helps draw out the cards that I don't want to draw, see into, like the attacks, and then hopefully draw bat back into like barricaded apotheosis. So I, I look at this as like a deck thinning thing. But on the turn that I draw it, how bad is it to draw into attacks? It doesn't seem that bad. Like sometimes drawing attacks is also not that bad for killing things. It has its dual purpose to like thin out your draws, but also kill things. His dual purpose. A jack of all trades is like a meme where you kind of want to find the things I mentioned, but you didn't find it, so you take this instead. What's up, Dropping Dimes? How you doing, buddy? It might just be violence here. And I don't know how bad Flash of Steel is. Flash of Steel is not that necessary. <clears throat> Doesn't do much for us. Flash of Steel works with violence. I can pull out Flash of Steel with violence and then. Maybe get something a little bit more. Actually, yeah. You'll see how violence is actually pretty important. I put that email because I had these pictures on my my computer, so I put a new I put that email up there. It's punishing me to get the time meter and beat of death, but. It, it, it works well with the balance I just added, actually. Another exhum. <laughs> exhum is more seen reds, more offerings, but and the, the, the main part is drawn into those things in the first place. This might just be a smooth stone. I think we gotta start moving cards, just a little bit. So cards that I would like to remove, I probably don't need the bash anymore. I probably don't care about inflame or hemokinesis anymore either. Ruby feels pretty low value here. I'd rather save money, but it's, it's between a smooth stone or removal. The cards that I added. Like yeah, I had two extra cards. Look at the two. Look at the two cards that I added. Look what they do fundamentally. Look what violence flash still do fundamentally. This it's not really like adding cards to the deck. 
The deck is functionally a 26 card or less. I wonder if I want... No. Um, it's probably just removable. I don't know if we want to move Bash. Maybe we don't need the Bash. Honestly, maybe Bash is the worst card here. Uppercut, and we also have Shockwave. Did I want to do for all these elites? I mean, I guess I kind of want to go for events here, right? And and look for... I want to go for events and maybe go for rest here. Yeah, maybe I just want to not go for the shop and go for a late shop instead. I want to see what the shop had to offer, but maybe these events were better. Will I smoke bomb? Maybe. Maybe I will. Kill the thing now, is it worth it? Is it worth taking damage to kill the thing now? Mm. The main issue here is maybe I made a pathing mistake though. Uh, the shop. Was fine, I suppose. I don't think I actually want to commit to this elite. Hmm. Nah, it should be fine. It should be fine. It's gotta survive that. They have three elite. I have three events anyway. So basically, I have scarier earlier time with the elite, but then we still have the three events in the elite anyways. This is fine. I don't mind resting though, on average. I went there for Blackstar Valley, but I mean, I think three leads was too ambitious anyways. I'm still always going to get two leads. This was two later leads, which I meant I can have time to build before I do two later leads. This one means I'm fighting a little early elite. For, it's kind of scary, but I, I got to see a shop. I got to see an early shop, which is quite nice. And then I still get the three events that I want to see anyways here. All right, so this is fine. Uh, we seem to get... So let me show what violence is. Okay, so there's actually no more attacks, but now all my draws that I see are actually good draws. So now you maybe think, oh, you're gonna drop out this anyways. Well, I took out a reckless charge from my deck, and I got a, I got a dark embrace value. So I got, I drew two cards for violence, and now I got apotheosis. And maybe people think that's a bad choice, but I think violence is five head. I don't, I don't want to keep validating my own choices. I still think violence is five head. I think it's beyond five head. Then I don't understand the people who think violence is bad then. I don't understand. Me no, un me no entiende. Me no entiende, chico. A lot of strength as well. Okay, so we lose. Oof. Oof. I think seeing red is more important here than dark and uh, than serpent ring. Serpent ring is good, but I think, yeah. We, we value the energy from that too much. Let's say I don't want to rest. If I don't want to rest, cards that I really want to upgrade are like Barricade if I get it early so I can more playable. I also want to upgrade True Grit so I can do things like Sentinel more often. And I also want to upgrade Apotheosis so it's more playable as well. So here's the thing. The question is, do I want to add some super ring back into my deck, or am I happy with just getting overall removal? So, like, yeah, we have strength, we have spot weakness and flame. That's like a secondary backup to do things. But overall, what we really want to function and do is entrench scaling, body slam, lethal. And we actually would rather get things like disarm and remove some of this stuff. If I had a decision to remove seven cards, or five, or three, hemokinesis would be gone. 
Reckless Charge would be gone. Spot Weakness would be gone. And Flame would be gone. So then we have one, two, like, if I can remove all the strength aspects, remove hemokinesis, remove all these cards, and focus on the nitty gritty of Apotheosis Barricade, I would love that. So I think Sword Ring removal is actually beneficial for us in the long run, or just in the immediate. It was a strength dump, so it hurts, but the deck, over, the overarching thing the deck has is big, big block with Body Slam, which is not necessary for strength. And we, we don't just see the entrenched stuff with body slam as often because our stuff is killing rather quickly with strength but if we were to remove like rupture hemo and flame combust reckless the deck becomes uh 10 times better in fact if i had the ability to remove seven cards i think we just immediately win um anyways um do i f am i ever thinking that I, I potentially want to smoke bomb if i think that i'm potentially if i think about potentially wanting to um Smoke bomb. Let's say like I really want the black star value, and smoke bomb is not in the picture for me. Then rest becomes a little bit more likely because I don't want to die. Now, what kills us? Reptomancer first three turns are pretty scary. And if worst case scenario, I could always smoke bomb. But nemesis, I think we have time to set up a little bit. And then we have to fight in it. Oh, these could be a hallway fights, and then this gets to the fight. Okay. And I think Giant Head, we have definitely time to set up. So I, don't, I think we're not going to rest. The problem is what we'll upgrade is better than 22 HP here. I think the energy stuff that helps us would be like Apotheosis, Scene Red, True Grit Plus, but Barricade. I think Apotheosis is always the upgrade here. Okay, the first two turns of this are pretty scary. So let's see how this goes. I'll do Valence here. And move we'll the shrug, see if we can draw up something better. I mean I could I could use my early damage that I have, like the inflame and hemo to kill these minis and maybe buy some more time. I could also do things like Sentinel, Heba Sentinel, and the still cast does not exhaust them, never mind. But there's things like the still cast to help us actually do more things. I think what we do here is we actually try to kill these minions as best we can. But I also want to weaken her, so it's kind of tough. So maybe I keep the wounds in my deck, let them hit me, and weaken her. And we'll stabilize. We drew a big portion of our deck out already. So now we're only drawn into like the good stuff, the battle trance, the offerings, the apotheosis, the barricade. We're drawn only to the good stuff. So this first turn is the worst it's probably gonna get. What's up? What's up, Amber? I could just throw chaos now. What was the last thing it just played? What was the last thing it just played? The center's bang. Okay. So now the draws are even better. The draws are now. The offering, the battle trance, the barricade. Basically, I basically win. I think weakening here is pretty nice. I think bringing back an entrench would help quite a bit, but only in the world where, only in the world where I actually like entrench right now would be quite nice because I need a block next turn. But I, I th no, I think it's the wrong choice. It might just be shrug it off to bring back. I'm not even sure if we play in flame here. I'm not even sure if we just use the energy of a headbutt at all. I wonder if we just let this, We have two headbutts, right? We got one from Pandora's. I could just let this be my draw. I guess Flash of Steel helps me kill the minions. And that could be useful. Okay, this is good. Good turn for us. Very good turn for us. I'll probably just win the fight off this. It's a very good turn for us. I wonder if I want to shockwave now. Wait for apotheosis. I think we just do exhume first and see. Well, it depends. Do you want to draw first and see what we get, or just keep doing offering and see? Well, offering upgrade would be better, huh? If I get the upgrade.
tough. Do I want to do Exhumed Offering now, or do I want to do this and maybe get Apotheosis first? Apotheosis would make everything much better. There is 12 cards in my draw. You never know. Maybe Offering first is better. And don't worry about the upgrades right now, although the upgrades make everything better. I think we do Offering first. Okay. Now we just win. Combust goes all the minions here. Um. Yeah. How do we want to play this? We we're taking a lot of damage. Double offering means we take a lot of self damage, which means rest that much more value. But we do need to sustain some, some capacity. Hmm. We're gonna get quite a bit of wounds here. Okay, we do this. That's probably just probably my opponent there. I think we do. We do this. Okay, very nice. I'd rather not get wounds. I get to zoom now for seeing red, get energy ex excess. Next turn is we have second wins. Um, I don't need spot weakness. It certainly doesn't hurt. That's gonna die regardless. Dragon Brace can basically mean if I I don't need rupture here either. I can headbutt the cards that I want, like entrench, and we just win the game. Haven't been here in a while. Feels good to be back. What's up, Diego? How you doing, buddy? Welcome back to five months, man. Appreciate it. We'll be back in trench again, we just win again. Thinking with massive portals. We're thinking with portals so large, people can't fathom. Let's get a budget and win. The problem is mainly is the amount of damage I took for this. Like to do all these offering stuff means we just we take quite a bit of damage to do this stuff. It's a problem. Helix is very good. Helix is actually kind of awkward of offering, but it saves some life, actually. Now these are not good card rewards. Blood for blood. I guess Twin Strike dumps our strength, but I think, like I said, we'd rather to keep, keep the deck as is right now. Sentinel is too clunky without reliable True Grit. Um, Bottle Flame, what does it actually want? Bottle Flame, maybe Flash of Steel is the best option. Yeah, I'm home office right now. So Flash of Steel basically saves us the most. It's good against the heart, but sometimes it just saves us six life on offering, and that's okay. So. Fossilized Helix is fine. It also it's, it depends. It helps us survive the first three turns, which is also very important. Or to save his life buffering. If I bottle anything, it's probably just a headbutt sometimes to make sure I can do more shenanigans. So early headbutt means I can do things like... <sighs> early headbutt just does a lot of things, but maybe just... Fundamentally, Flash Steel is probably the best because it just redraws itself. Uppercut means we get nothing except remove artifacts on Dunadeca and Act 4 Elite. I think Headbutt has some interesting play. And this is a hard fight. This might be a smoke bomb, depends on how it goes. We always flash through here, and now, now we only draw into the good stuff. I say good stuff. I can do Headbutt, Flash of Steel again. Not that it really matters, actually. I could just save energy and just trigger it here. The deck really wants to draw quickly. I could just save energy and trigger it. So we got the barricade out. We got barricade with buffer as well. So we could just take barricade and pass. And then from there, we draw into our offering. 
battle trains, you know, all the good cards coming up. Unless this is a, um, Apotheosis now. Alright, so I think we just take the buffer now. We're still not in the range for one to smoke bomb. But it's still smoke bombable. That changes things. Um. Hmm. If I pull out attacks, the only that actually no attacks left. Oof. All right, so we're taking some damage. I can't determine whether or not I want to just take this damage and try to win the fight from here. The the problem is, in order to win this fight, it's going to require offering. It's going to require offering. So I'm going to take not only this damage, which is nine, plus six from offering. That's fifteen damage I'm taking. But the rewards are pretty good. Once we get the Dark Embrace offering out, we win the fight. The problem is taking the 15 damage to get that to happen. No, I don't leave here. We'll take, we'll take the uh, 11 damage for the reward of this fight. A 50% chance drawn to offering. Oh, we, we guarantee offering here. Alright, so we just win the fight now. That's what I said was gonna happen. The problem is, uh, like I said, I'll take 11 damage to get the rewards with this fight. That's exactly what I just said. Question is. I think I can win the fight now with Body Slam. I can get into an Entrench. I think I can win the fight right now, actually. I guess I just win the fight right now. Yep. So I, I literally just do power through into scene red and we just win the fight. Eleven damage for reward, I think is worth it. Going great. What's up, Ultra Cannon? Alright, GG. That's good. Good reward. Huge reward. A second body slam, though, on the other hand. Not as necessary. Sucks to be able to recall that. That would have been quite nice. Boom. Alright, we got the rare relic we were looking for. Um Yes. The group said, hey, we yet hopefully have some entertainment to help you out. And make it all nicer. Valence is crazy to me. You guys want to see what Valence does? I wish I had sustain though, to be honest. Oh, that helps. That absolutely helps. Positively helps before. So, Barricade doesn't necessarily need to happen right away. It's not a perfect solution, but it isn't a solution to have the ability to block, feel okay about the block, and have entrenched be valuable earlier on before Barricade even exists. So it absolutely, absolutely helps with this and Entrench in the deck. Emily is still AoE, which I like, but we're past the point of wanting Emily here. And Dual Wield, Dual Wield has fringe value for Dark Embrace. It has fringe value for things like Double Body Slam, but it also doesn't make a lot of sense. Dual Wield sometimes helps with the Flash of Steel to do more things. Still doesn't make a lot of sense. 
Swift Pot, I think, is better than Smoke Bomb at this point. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I, I still want to keep Smoke Bomb as a way to get out of one of these events because if I think Spaghetti Monster Transient, sometimes we might have trouble. I want to Smoke Bomb as a way to just get out. I think Swift Pot is pretty valuable to, for, like, the heart itself. But I still feel some latent fear about these next two events and this potential lead, even though I feel like we're pr probably on line with the things we just got. Um, I don't know. I'm going to pass this for pot for now. I'd rather not do this. This is a good... This helps my first starting turn. It helps get rid of artifacts as well. I still want to get something a little bit better from the shop. So that pot this early is always very nice. So like, look at this, 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 look at this. Guys, calibers would be good here. Guys, calibers would be good here. Guys, calipers would be good here. Offering doesn't take any damage now. Oh my god, we're online, boys. It's over. It's already over. The party has begun, and it also just started. It's over, my friends. Look at us go. I'm out of control we're so close to winning the heart right now god what's up smith there's a uh what's up reader yeah gotta be easier to say hope not just gotta get, get just got done watching the crazy number yeah no that was a crazy run right why did i pick up energy relic look at this dude Look at this dude. It's okay. I've learned to ignore all backseating. And go into alpha brain mode. He's probably trolling. I know. I thought this early obviously makes a huge difference. This is true. Look at this go, boys. Look at this go. God, I love it when entrenched decks work. They're so satisfying. What's up, Colder Sub? So satisfying. Oh, I didn't take any... So the other energy relic was a uh, Mark of Pain. And I, I, I think we had energy solutions. So we had double sentinel. We had seen red. We had offering. And I didn't need the Mark of Pain negative downside for energy. Because ice cream and the cards that I had were fine. Um... So that's why I didn't take an energy relic. I'd rather get more relics. So things like I had double exhumes. So I had a lot of curses, but I brought the curses into fruition. Into, into beauty. I, I did this. This, this is what we created. Pandora's box included. A body slam. Second wind was a curse. I took an act one and look at second wind. My lord, have mercy. Give me good relics, please. These are not really good relics. Hopefully, we just make the pool better for act four. Havoc is interesting. Havoc is quite interesting, actually. Havoc. No, not necessary. So, we have 62 life. We can rest for 13 life, or we can upgrade something that we definitely want to make sure is... So, the things we can upgrade is, like, we want to make Barricade playable earlier on, or we can upgrade the offering to get into these Barricade even off uh, sooner. So, Barricade and Pathos are very 
Barricade Apothecary is offering our most important cards, so we can upgrade one of these cards, either Barricade or Offering. Maybe the card draw from Offering is better, maybe this Barricade Cheaper is better. Um, yeah. Oh, did I do headbutt on the? Did I do headbutt on Flash of Steel, or do I see where this draws first? We're getting closer, boys. I, I can't. I don't want to hit body slam. If I hit body slam, we just lose, right? So like, trigger is really risky here. Um. We can take some damage here, right? Like taking that little bit of damage is re comes back with Supreme Clay. That's fine. Okay, what well, perfect. I wanna make my draws better. It's crucial. In fact, I think I'd even do Xim with the end. So since I since I just did the whole violence thing, which I thought was a very nice pick by the way, I don't know. I'm like circle breaking myself. Um offering is drawn only into the nuts. Offering draws into complete nuts. So I take six damage, but maybe I don't have to take it all. Right? Maybe I don't have to take six damage at all. But setting up immediately is seems pretty important. Dark Embrace is immediately huge. Apotheos is we won. So now all we gotta find is find Barricade. Now Barricade is not as important. Because we do have We can do second win and find barricade as well, but uh, I'll do this. Okay. So we'll do entrench and we'll pass. I can do second win now. I'd rather not because I don't get the card draw from it. And I want to get the barricade and then we win. So we take like an offering worth of damage for that. And uh, for the most part, we're fine. So I would like to actually find second win now. So by playing this, this is interesting. Hmm. This is very interesting, actually. I don't want to do offering, but I want to do exhumes to do scene because I want to cycle my deck. Um, so I could do exhum for nothing. It's better than nothing. Huge. Fucking massive. God. I love it. Disgusting. Huge. So much card draw here. I don't think I need push for damage now. Save energy is more important. Power 3 is probably just really net positive here. Good for the trench coming up. The wounds are not as important because we have so much card draw to offset it. And boom, we're trying to trade our GG. Alright. As far as the next boss is concerned. Let's see. Huge. Um, cause my, like, my goal was, my goal was, uh, um, win each class three times in a row. Early entrench is very good. 
problem is like, when is it? It wanted to hit Sentinel, but if it hits, I need Apotheosis. Uh, we always want Apotheosis, right? Early Entrench is quite good. If, if it hits Entrench, we lose. So Trigger is really risky. The problem is if it hits Sentinel, and uh, I had the ability to get so much block right now. This is a very good second wind. Because I don't want any of these powers. And I want to get Calipers. Alright, we'll figure this out. I guess I don't need Sentinel. I guess we don't need any of this. Sentinel gives me more overall entrenched value though. Like, I think that seems relevant. Uh, I can get rid of it for energy for next turn, but... Hmm. Gives me 10 extra block. Hmm. True, it needs to be upgraded. True, it needs to be upgraded here. Huge. I fucking love violence so much. Violence is so so good. Do I bring in trench now? Cause we're we're drawing into the nuts yet again. We're back into position where we're drawing into ultra nuts. So do I bring in trench? Cause we're gonna need the ultra nuts from trench next turn, probably, right? I'm wasting my energy though. That means exhum and pathos are very huge and very important. This is tough. This is very tough right now. I don't know if I want to waste my energy or not. Hmm. I think it's fine. This is the last this is the last fight of the of the of the it's the last fight. So if I take damage it doesn't matter here. It's the last boss fight. Might be better just do damage here. Let's, I'll do this instead. Just gotta get a path through this barricade and we win the fight. Barricade is really important here. The problem is, I don't actually get any excess block. But it's going to be very important for the turns after. But we do have calipers. I think we just go for block here. Because we can draw back into barricade with headbutt. And it, we're actually not getting X's block. We're still not out of the woods yet. This is where I guess barricade... Uh, no, well, headbutt doesn't actually do anything for us here. I might just have to be human on this guy. I could have got weakened, but I think that uh, I don't need Birkin necessarily for this fight at all. I wonder if offering is better since we heal up anyways. Maybe offering is simply better. How about this? We got through the struggles, but we wish to win now. Did we play Barricade anyways? I guess we can do just Calipers. At the moment. I need a second wind. Uh, well, Calipers is not keeping up, actually. Calipers is not keeping up at the moment. So 
too many wounds. Oh god, Caliper's not keeping up. It's actually kind of scary. You're like five five years late. Zoom for life. Thanks for the quick prime, buddy. How you doing? What's up, Reloading? Caliper's not keeping up. I have too many wounds now. I need to play second win, but mm, I guess I have to commit second win very good at this point. Second win is super crucial here to get rid of wounds and to catch up. Um, headbutt might be necessary because I have too many wounds. I think energy is more important. We need, get, we need to get rid of these sentinels. I can't play another power through. I can't. But this is like a, a way to catch up right now. Is power through flame bear and trench. It's how we catch up. Might even want to consider two pot. We have so many wounds though. So the wounds will probably kill us after the fact. Which means we need to get like second wind played. Uh, maybe this is how we catch up. I think the wounds definitely are affecting us pretty bad. Yeah, this is this is a good second wind. I wonder if I want a second so we're drawn into more wounds. Would I want a second wind again next turn? Would I want to entrench again next turn? I think I want a second wind again, right? It's too late because I didn't play second wind yet. Um but yeah, we probably want a second wind as often as possible. Is this where we just play barricade now? Nah, we're not keeping up. I gotta get rid of those wounds. That's a weekend. That is a weekend. Um, we could do second win here. I can headbutt like the sentinel and do second win now. And that start giving me energy and doing pretty good. If I get rid of the sentinel, start catching back up a little bit. I can't really play barricade. I don't I, I remember I'm a three energy deck. I'm a three energy deck. We just never got to catch up with the entrench. Normally entrench is so much value. I, I'm good, but at this point we haven't I actually caught up. Because I haven't been able to get rid of the sentinels and I have too many wounds. It's just the way the, the draws went, which is scary for the heart for sure, but for the heart we have the duplication pot. So I can I could have doubled the entrench earlier with duplication pot and, and been fine. Because all you need is that one initial push and then we you know you exponentially scale. I don't know if I actually want to draw these cards next turn. Okay. If we play Barricade, he gets even stronger. But what? I don't think even if we play Barricade, we can catch up though. It, it, it does get rid of one draw though. That's that's important. Alright, this is my time to, to, to shine here. I don't want to draw into a trench. This is perfect. This is my time to shine now. Got rid of Sentinel as well. Okay. We're fine. We're out of the woods. God, that was rough, but it worked out. It was rough, but it worked out. It wasn't that simple, I don't think. There he was. Gotta get rid of those last. I gotta get rid of uh, a rupture. That deck is really good. So 
Get rid of those wounds and then game's over. There's technically, there's technically a world we can smoke bomb there for Lee. I, I definitely don't want to. So we'll see what pushes we have offered here. As far as upgrades are concerned, I would like to upgrade the, I think, offering the next best thing, the card draw was. But actually, in cheap entrenched is pretty important because we with calipers, we can now play entrenched for cheaper, which is pretty important to get a, a boost. So maybe entrenched is actually the upgrade here. We did establish that Truget is pretty important because getting Sentinel discarded early on could help quite a bit true and trench together are really important that really is still kind of scary evolve helps yeah master strategy helps a lot too it might just be master strategy evolve the other alternative so master strategy evolve make things run smoother for sure but dragon base counter counteracts evolve like Dark Embrace makes Evolve a little bit less good. Whereas Master Strategy is purely good for exactly what we want to do, which is set up and win. Now card removal. Okay, there's also Ancient Pot. So I can do Ancient Pot to get rid of the Vulnerable on the Heart. And then if I just survive the Vulnerable phase through the Heart, then we just win. Problem is, um, I think Master Strategy is too good here. Surviving the Vulnerable part for the Heart, I mean, we have things like... We have Helix for the big attack, if anything. So we always have Helix. And then the multi-hit actually gives us block. In fact, I might want to take the multi-hit. The multi-hit gives me entrenched started, and then we just win the game. So you don't need Ancient Pot. As long as we preserve Helix in that situation. So offerings become a little bit of a nombo. We always take that, we always take that. Let's go. Violence before Master of Strategy is pure fucking premium disgusting gas. It's foul sulfur gas right now. We are in pure gas territory. It's brutal. We have barricade and we have headbutt and trench, but we gotta see what we draw first. Boom. Okay, cool. Only when you kill one of them can you do it. Uh, energy becomes the issue now. Energy becomes a huge issue now. So we can do. Mm, I would like to play Entrench, headbutt it, no, nah, this energy is a huge issue right now. God, what I'll do for energy right now. Because I could do Barricade, Entrench, then headbutt the Entrench, next turn I get the Horn Cleat, I can actually block next turn. Um, what I would do for energy right now is crazy. I want to draw, I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried, like, I kind of want to draw. Barricade Flipper feels fine. It's totally fine, sure. The overarching issue is that this is going to do 21, which I buffer for, and then I'm going to take it 40 to the face, which I really don't want to do. I want to be able to set up a little bit more. I guess Offering could be coming. Is there a way I can get Offering now? I say I do Reckless Shrug Battle Trance. Yes. You say I get set up setting up only Barricade in a 22 card deck where I have two burns coming. And 22 cards that I need to get through, especially Evolve. Um, well, not so much Evolve, but Apotheos is ex offering Exhum. This is much more important. This is the first part, but the, the other 22 cards are really important as well. So I'm not necessarily set up, whereas I could technically get something like Evolve out as well. Because the two burns are going to be relevant. But I definitely don't want to lose buffer prematurely. Um, I'll decide. Give me a sec. Ori Calcum is pretty bad. I don't lose any buffer like that. It's losing value if I do b battle trends what what would change my mind double shrug artifacts would be nice but it's not now and is a huge issue Two burns are gonna be a thing.
Okay. So we're just gonna take like uh, 40 to the face. I don't think we can stop that. Or we, can, we can take less actually. We can take. Well, the burns happen first, right? And maybe taking 40 to the face is still fine. Because once we set up, we can still win. And duplication pause is gonna be. Like with Entrench, should be able to win the art fight. So I, still, I can still take damage and be fine here. Seamer is not even necessary because we're always losing buffer. This is actually doing 25. I can never block for 25. But this is my point of like drawing this start so far early on the previous turn. But now when we just get this out, we should win the fight. So we're just, technically we're just going to be taking 40 to the face. Which is... Obviously not stellar. I can do duplication pot to save 10 life. That doesn't seem very relevant. Can't smoke until one of them are dead. No. Double shrug is more life. More health. It's four more block. Yeah, we're never able to stop that unless we duplicate that, but that's only for 10 life. There's shockwave and weakening them. There's a world where that is exists because, you know, we don't always need to take barricade out because we do have calipers, right? So things like shockwave in them. Oh, I couldn't exhume shockwave because I didn't have energy for that. That costs 5 energy. But things like, I mean, the following turn exhumment, we didn't know exhum was going to come. I mean, we need energy for a lot of things, like being able to do zoom, getting rid of Sentinel for energy would be fantastic, or like seeing red, but it just didn't happen that way. It's either Entrench or um, Battle Trance. So, we really want to find Offering about the Osis and Dark Embrace. I think Entrench is probably the best thing to take. But the problem is we want to make sure we draw into Dark Embrace. One of these, like, we need to draw one of these cards. Dark Embrace mainly. There's, there's a chance we have a really bad draw next turn. I really want to do Entrench. But maybe Battle Trench just secures it. The problem with Battle Trench is that Offering doesn't draw anymore. You don't know if Jim's going to come. And also, just doing a flat Shockwave gets rid of your buffer. It, just, it didn't seem like it wasn't the right play at all. Um, I mean, Entrench is pretty important, but what's really important is that we get Offering next turn. We need Offering. But it's not just about the, the not, so it wasn't just not an open Exhum, it was also about losing Buffer for free. We just really need an Offering next turn. Um... Battle makes offering a little, a little bit worse. What the fuck was that? So now the problem becomes... Um, maybe we don't do offering because it's too much life and we need to start preserving our life here. Silly. I 
Um, well, we just gotta... Okay, that helps a lot. Gamma's is very good. Gamma's might just win the run. True is very good. Gamma's might just win the run. So this is effectively more life. This is huge. Torrent up is huge. Gamma's is huge for what I'm trying to do. Duplication. This is a... That might, might be enough. That might be enough. We have buffer as well. And then we got to survive the second multi-hit, which is actually beneficial for entrench. And then once we're online, we should win. Huge. Huge rewards. These are actually very relevant. It makes uppercut even better of a weakened source. This is super relevant. It, everything about this was super relevant. Offering first turn. Whoa. So if we lose the buffer, it's very risky. But we potentially do offering master strategy, big gambler's brew, and just win the fight here. Ooh. Let me get some more water. So now we determine if we ever if there's ever a world we want to do offering twice to um, draw a full hand, get more energy. If there's ever a world we want to do offering twice. Or do we want to save a double duplication pot for the double entrenched? Once double entrenched is played, we just probably win GG. Is double entrenched not very necessary though? Because what's most important is getting set up, especially with this mind of life, right? So getting set up is super important. So if we do offering twice we, with Gambler's Brew and Master of Strategy, we effectively draw our whole deck, right? And we get the energy to play things. Now, the entrenched thing can happen with just a simple headbutt. I have two headbutts. So I can do like entrenched headbutt, that's sometimes enough. Which duplication pot kind of ensures that we can quite literally draw the 20 cards of our deck right now. The thing about the tricky part about this offering is that Yes, you want to save the helix for the for the, the beat of death, essentially, but With this turn, it's, it's, and my out of life is, is probably really crucial to set up right now. Which is why I think double offering is probably the play. Because then I can draw six cards, right? I get the energy to play things. If I don't like what I see, I can Gambler's Brew, Flash of Steel, Gambler's Brew everything. Keep Master Strategy, draw again. That should severely increase our odds of finding Apotheosis Barricade and Entrench, right? And once that's online, we should probably win. You don't do my show strategy first because I'd rather lose the buffer for offering. Nine cards is not enough for... I need to be set up here. He's about to add statuses to my deck. I need to be set up right now. Because I have no no life. And he's about to add cards. About to add statuses. And with the, my, my amount of life, I think I need to be... So the only other thing duplication power would do for us is double entrench... And, and catch up with that. <sighs> so many things we have to play. It's crazy. That violence is huge. Violence draws out my headbutts. Um, so that I can guarantee get what I want to play. This is huge. Um, I gotta play a lot of cards here. It's gonna be a painful turn, but I gotta play a lot of cards here. I want to get some block first. I was gonna play back the charge, but I don't think I need to. I want to play Evolve, it's really important, but... Okay. I, I kind of want to do Flash Steel, but... I also... I want to do Flash Steel, and then I want to do Gamma's Burn and everything else but Master Strategy. Beef is going to hurt, but I think that's something we're going to have to... Live with. Dragon Base is huge. Brace is huge. At this point, we might even consider doing Evolve. I might even do consider playing Flame Barrier here. But we want 
We really want to draw into everything right now. I could do Master Strategy first. I draw four cards. I could do Gambler's Burn all of this first, and then Master Strategy after the fact. Gambler's Burn helps me get... Hmm. Once we get set up, we're fine. Evolve is very good to get out of the deck, absolutely. The problem is... I don't have enough energy to play things I want to play. And I want to maintain energy here, so that's why I kind of want to do Gambler's Burn right now. Because I want to maintain energy. It's crucial that I get Apotheosis Barricade out now. And we do entrench stuff. The problem with entrench, my head puts are here, so if I draw into entrench prematurely, it might be bad. We have a lot of block next turn, absolutely, but we kind of want entrench for that turn. In fact, entrench is super crucial. The problem is our head puts are right here. Um, this draws four cards, so I will need to make a space for it. If I don't, so if I don't get entrench play with some level of block. Since both my headbutts are here, that means I can't headbutt entrench that easily. If I don't get entrench play with some level of block, then we will just die, basically. So we do have weaken, right? And we do have some decent block. My point is I need entrench to hit something valuable. So if I get entrench next turn, that may be really good. Entrench next turn basically means it might be better to do master strategy, because if I if I see entrench, I can headbutt it. Mm, this is interesting. Do I just do Flame Barrier Master Strategy here? What if I don't draw Apotheosis? What if I draw a Barricade? It's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Huge, 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 Okay, huge, huge, huge. All right, so <clears throat> if I exhume the offering now, um, I get the energy. What I really need is a true grid, right? So I need to get true grid, get rid of the sentinel, get more energy again, and then gamblers brew, and then we win. I can do master strategy instead. I think offering is better here. Oh, I should have played a card first. I should have played a card first. This is drawing enough cards. It's a problem. I don't have barricade out yet. Yeah, I could break trigger right now and do it on on. Barricade of all power through. We're drawn to entrench. play evolve instead or we want to play headbutt on true grit and stuff we just want to draw to entrench right do we want to do we want to do we want to headbutt headbutt so that we can do entrench so we can headbutt do we want to do headbutt headbutt so we can do entrench headbutt entrench next turn fuck evolve fuck evolve headbutt headbutt and with gamblers brew do entrench headbutt entrench Fuck evolve. We're gonna want evolve played, by the way. Just throwing that out there. We're gonna want evolve played. All right. I wonder if that's enough blocks to play evolve now. <laughs> to be honest, I can do entrench and just win for the fight, basically. Like I, this is what I'm talking about. We're setting up winning, and we won. I mean, we had to go. We had to do the offering to get through the whole deck. We still have Gamma's I guess. I could play evolve now, get it out of the way. Second win is about to just win the game. 
I think we might as well do entrench. Let's be honest. I'll save the energy. I, I can keep this for later on with the ball. And we always have Zoom in red. Oh, a second wind is huge. We can draw our whole deck right now. I could do Master Is Master Strategy better? I like Shira because I want to keep up on energy. I want to keep up on energy with, with seeing red, but Master Strategy can help me get into all the things I really want to get into right now on this turn. Because I'm kind of okay on energy, and we also get a bigger scene red. I don't want to do Offering again now. We're, we're, we're past the point of Offering. Offering gives me the card draw and the energy, sure. I still want to get Evolve out. But, okay, Sentinel works for Second Wind right now. Maybe Sentinel is just better for Second Wind. It's like less damaging than Offering. Does Offering really bother us though? Sentinel works with Second Wind just the way I want it to. It keeps me energy, but it gets less card draw. But maybe card draw is going to come regardless here. We don't give a damn about Combust Rupture. That's a joke to me. This, this is mistakes in my past. We're getting rid of mistakes from the past. Get that out of the deck. All right, let's do that a couple more times. Let's do that a couple more times. I save energy here. Give me headbutt, give me death. Give me headbutt, give me death. Give me headbutt, give me death. Fucking beautiful. You want to know why it's beautiful, guys? I'll tell you why it's beautiful. I did a couple of things that a lot of people wouldn't have done. I guarantee it. My axeman was ballsy, ambitious, and stupid. I wouldn't say stupid. I think it was fine, but like, I don't know. I think the axeman decisions that I made were very relevant. But perhaps, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'm talking shit.